Well, good Saturday morning, people. We're here in our continuing series on understanding difficult scriptures, and our title today is Ten Bridesmaids. Right when the bride and bridegroom return, and this is also about the second coming, the judgment, second coming and judgment. So we're going to the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, and in verses one through thirteen. And it says at that time, this is very important because Jesus is telling parables. He's telling about the end times, uh, his uh, second return, the judgment. And he says at that time. So you need to say to yourself, when is that time? And this is when the evil servant is discovered in Matthew chapter 24. When you read that, the evil servant is discovered at the judgment day, indicating Christ's final coming in judgment. <clears throat> so when is very important. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. So this is a parable. Like is actually a simile. Okay, so it's going to be compared to this. Kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. And this is the cultural norm of attendance responsible get this they're responsible to escort the bride and the groom we're going to look at that a little closer in a few minutes so there will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and the lamps always symbolize the presence of god the light of god's word so they took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any extra oil. And we're going to see that oil represents the anointing of God. And actually, they didn't have any oil. They didn't take any extra oil. But the wise ones took oil and flasks along with their lamps. When the bridegroom was delayed... They all became drowsy and fell asleep. All became drowsy. All ten of them became drowsy and fell asleep. And this is indicating the last judgment. Okay. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. The Vulgate, the Latin, the Syriac, and the Persic versions add, Come out and meet him and the bride. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. And this is kind of important. All these ten appeared to be pure. All these ten appeared to be bridesmaids. All these tens looked and smelled and acted like and talked like real bridesmaids. All the virgins woke and trimmed their lamps. Oh, they all became drowsy and fell asleep, indicating less judgment. And they remember the last cry at the midnight, the cry rang out, right? And they all got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us your oil. Our lamps are going out. No. And then the, in the Greek, in the Koine Greek, when you read this, this, this no is like surprise and regret. This is not like, ha. Huh, you guys crazy? This is a surprise. Whoa, no. And it's a surprise and it's regret. Oh, I'm sorry. No, said the wise ones. Or there may be, and this is an obvious statement, or there may not be enough. They were being polite in the Greek. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. And what they were saying is, you got to go get this le the legitimate way, the anointing of God. I can't share my anointing with you, and you can't share yours with me. Go get the oil the legitimate way. Go to God. But while they were on their way to buy it, the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins arrived and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore keep watch, 
because you do not know the day or the hour. And Jesus was talking to Israel, okay? He was not talking to the church of the born-again believers, the church of the age of grace, the church that you and I live in. As you saw last week, we talked about the bride and the church being the bride. The church is the bride. The church is who Jesus made the promise to, I'm coming back. The church is the one that he gave the cup to. And then the church is the one who said, in my father's house are many mansions. You have to go back and look at that one if you missed it. The book of Proverbs 31, 18 talks about that lamp, that light, the presence of God. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out by night. That woman, that godly woman, the virtuous woman, in this book of Proverbs, she would keep that lamp lit 24 sevens to indicate the presence of God. If it went, ever went out, it was a shame. And if it ever went out, she was responsible. And that's very interesting. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. And glorify your Father in heaven. That's the light. The gospel message. The light. The, the news. The good news about Christ and his return. Proverbs. Chapter 23. Verse 23. This is a good one to put on your, on your mirror. On a post-it note. On the dashboard of your card. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. This is where we need to be. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. We'll look at the oil. I said it represented the, the anointing. First Samuel 16, 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. This is David. And from that day, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. That was the anointing, the oil of anointing. We see it in, used in Leviticus. We see it used throughout all the Bible. There's just a couple examples. Leviticus 8, 12. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. Okay, so this anointing sets you apart. This anointing is about a ministry. The number 10, we look at these 10 virgins, okay? These 10 bridesmaids. The number 10 was greatly taken notice of and used among the Jews. A congregation with them, with the Jews of this time, and this is in the Talmud, this is in some of the writings and teachings, it consisted of 10 persons, and less than that number did not make one, did not make a synagogue. And wherever there were 10 persons in a place, 10 men in a place, they were obliged to build a synagogue. This is the Talmud writings. This is the, what, the, what they were taught. You get a, get a village going, you get 10 people going, you, you're obliged to build a synagogue. And this comes from uh, Solomon Maimon. He was uh, one of the Jewish writers. Ten bridesmaids represented the whole nation of Israel. Whereas five bridesmaids, the biblical number for grace, five of them rested upon the grace. And see, we're the bride. We're already taken out. We're not either foolish or uh, wise bridesmaids. This is talking about the Israelites. This is talking about the church of Israel back when Jesus walked the earth. And it's talking about in Matthew 25, talking about the second coming in judgment. Not talking about when Jesus sweeps the bride, when they're lifted up and flown away to the wedding. There's a bishop, K.C. Ply. And he, he taught a lot about the Orientalisms, about the Eastern culture. He taught a lot about the wedding culture. After the ceremony of marriage 
succeeded a feast of seven days if the bride was a virgin or three days if she was a widow. This feast celebrated was celebrated in her father's house. Her father's house. Did you get that? Jesus went to prepare us a place. We are flown to his place, his father's mansion. But see, the feast was celebrated in her father's house. This stage, at this stage in the marriage, the marriage rites is brought before us. Let me read that again. This stage in the marriage rites, which is brought before us, is the return of the bridegroom with his bride, after the espousals have been completed, bringing the bride with him. And the bride is us, remember? Some of his retinue that dis were dispatched before the rest, they brought word that he was at hand, upon which they, the bridesmaids, remember we're with the bridegroom at this point, upon which the bridesmaids went forth with their lamps trimmed and burning to welcome him and conduct him with his bride into the house, the house of the bride's father. And for this service, they had the honor of being guests at the marriage feast. This is when Christ returns with his bride to set up the earthly kingdom. Look at the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 15. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of fury, of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. That's what's happening at the second judgment. That's Israel. That's when we come back with Christ. And we are the bride. He's the bridegroom. Go to Luke chapter 4, verse 17. It's very interesting. 17 through 20 in Luke 4. Jesus, he took the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. It was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. Now follow this carefully. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. There's our oil. To preach good news to the poor, to preach to Caruso the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, period. Then he rolled up the scroll, returned it to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Well, yeah, because they knew this scripture. They knew this by heart. And he read to them out of this, but he stopped short of the very next phrase. Go to Isaiah chapter 61. And in verses 1 and 2, it covers the scripture where he was reading, The Spirit of the Lord God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach Good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of our God's vengeance, which my people is not today. And it's not when we are lifted up to go with Jesus to the Bema in the Greek, the award center where we receive our crowns, but then we come back with him, and he judges. And the book of Isaiah says this, when Jesus read the scripture in Luke chapter 4, he stopped. And if he'd have read any further, the whole of the Gospels would fall apart. The whole church of the age of grace uh, could not fit in there. He stopped. He stopped right where he should. And because he stopped, Everybody was like, why did you stop? Every eye was upon him. He stopped because in that comma, in that little comma, right there between to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, comma, put a comma there, and the day of our God's vengeance in that comma. 
is you and I. In that comma is the church of the bride. After that comma is the ten bridesmaids. So this really is kind of simple when you read it, when you understand it, when you search and research. But I want to warn you, don't take my word for it. You should search these things out for yourself. You should know that you know that you know what the truth is. So I might tickle your ears with this. And if it's the truth, great. I'll stand before God and he'll say, well done. If it's not the truth, I'll stand before God and I'll say, oh my, oh God, I just didn't realize. I did not know how big and mighty your word was. I did not understand. Even today I would do that. But if I'm right and you follow me and you don't check this out, you're going to be foolish. You need to make this your own. You need to understand that you are the bride, that Jesus gave you that cup, right? That cup that we celebrate in communion in a, in a majority of our churches today, that cup of the promise, I'm coming back for you. You got it? This stuff is beautiful. So understanding difficult scriptures, here's our one about the 10 bridesmaids. God bless you. See you next week.